What's going on, guys? Army Fire Dog is back again. How have y'all been? Merry Christmas, you beautiful souls. So today, I actually have the review time for you of a wireless headphone that I was quite impressed with, especially if you like the more of the Beats sound. And that I'm, of course, talking about the Blitzwolf BW HP1. Like I said, this is their around $30, $40 wireless headphone. And if you remember from an unboxing video, I even stated these look very similar to old Beats Studios. And well, as I get into my review, they definitely kept that theme throughout. But as always, I like to start with the construction and then I'll work my way down from there. The construction of the Blitzwolf BWHP1 headphones is definitely primarily made of plastic, a very high gloss plastic as you can see right here. The only aluminum that I was able to find is on the hinges right here which are also collapsible. The headphone itself is actually quite large. This is as small as they go and they just about fit on my head. As you can see I kind of force it to go one extra slot down but considering I am usually between four to five uh, clicks down to find my size these are a rather large headphone especially in retrospect to that. Now moving on downwards they are over ear and I will say these should fit the majority of the ears. These even fit comfortably my ears. They go completely overlap my larger ears. However, my ears do uh, kind of rub against, not scratch, but kind of rub against the driver housing right there. Not enough to make it uncomfortable at all, but I do feel it. So for those of you who have like wider ears outwards, that may become an issue for you. However, for most, I don't think you'll find any discomfort in that, even if your ears do touch. All of your controls, are actually on the right ear cup, which is dictated by the R. And apologies, a horrible lighting, I know. I'm still getting my office set up. We are just now moved into our new house. Uh, so lighting's horrible. As you can see, I don't have a good backdrop. <laughs> Gotta make do with me for a while until I get everything set up. But continuing on, uh, L and R is dictated by the L right there and R right here, right here. And all your controls are right on the side. You have your volume up and track forward, volume down and previous track, play, pause, answer, hang up, and power. Now, I personally didn't like the format that these are uh, formatted in because if you simply tap the button up, it does not increase the volume. If you tap up on the button, it will actually go to the next track. Same with the previous. You actually have to hold the button down for about a second and a half before the volume starts going up. That's not a really big issue at all, but I personally didn't like it. I wish it was reversed, as in I just tap the button and it will do volume, hold it to go to track forward. I think that would be more of a consistent experience. And that continued with the power option. If you hold the power button down, it will desync the product it's with and then it will go back into Bluetooth mode. You have to continuously hold it and then it will power off. So you have to hold it for about four seconds total for it to go from on to complete off. So you can't just hold it down and right when the voice prompt start just to release it, then no, it's still in Bluetooth pairing and it is still turned on. It will repair right back to your device. You have to continuously hold it for the device to say powering off. Then you can turn it off. On the left ear cup, all you will find is your three and a half millimeter aux input. Now, a really cool thing about this, actually two really cool things. First one, kind of standard, not uh, super rare, and that is that if these headphones die, all you have to do is plug in your provided 3.5 millimeter aux cable and you continue to listen to your music. What makes this cool, at least to me anyways, what makes it cool is while these are in Bluetooth mode, so while they're wireless, you can plug in your micro USB charging cable and I forgot that's also on your right ear cup is your micro USB charging port. You can plug that in and it can charge while you are still listening. A lot of the previous headphones or a lot of wireless headphones in general, once you're charging them, they turn themselves off of wireless mode. You can still charge and listen to an aux, but these, they will stay in wireless mode. At least they did for me when I arrived, when the times I tested it out were just fine. To finish up with my thoughts on the construction of it is though these are made of very, uh, on the cheaper grade of plastic, they do actually have a good bit of weight to them. I was expecting them to be very lightweight, uh, kind of the cheap feeling light, but no, they actually have a good bit of weight to them. Now, I don't know if that's just the driver housing themselves or if they've put some extra weights in here to give it that feel, I don't know. 
but they do feel good in your hands for a 30-ish, $40 pair, depending on what you want to search through. They do actually have some good weight to them in that respects. Now, moving on to the comfort. The comfort of the HP One headphones, actually pretty good. They're pretty respectable. I personally had these on for three plus hour sessions and I, again, personally never had any issues with them. My ears never got tired. Uh, they never got overheated. I never had to adjust them. It was just a, it was a comfortable experience. It wasn't great at all, but it certainly wasn't bad. I would say it was more on the good side. If I had to get between a one and five scale, five being great, it'd be about a four. The padding on the headband is quite thick. And though it looks like it has give, if I disperse the weight some, it actually has a good bit of density to it. It's a steady amount of give that I think they did really good with. The ear cups, they could use a little bit more uh, density to them, but when they are dispersed all the way on your head, they don't have near as much uh, give. As you can see, I'm trying to, can't really show force with the phone, but they do have a little bit more give than I would want, but not enough to make them uncomfortable, like I said. I never had to, even with my larger ears, had to readjust them. So they were comfortable throughout the experience. Now, moving on to the sound quality. What y'all care the most about, and if you read my written review, which of course is going to be linked in the description, I have referenced these to the older Beat Studios from the Generation 1, maybe kind of 2s as well. I have not heard any Beats product from about mid-generation 2 onward. These are very similar to the original Beat Studios. So if you liked the original Beat Studio sound, you like the feel of them, but you don't want to spend, what, the three, four hundred dollars for what the new ones are, you can probably find old ones cheaper, but you have about a thirty, forty dollar budget, I really think you will like these. Because these really reminded me of what I remembered the Beat Studio sounded like. They have very, very punchy bass, and it extends throughout the frequency range. Uh, it's like if you're in your car and you have an equalizer, everything you turn, you're always turning the bass all the way up. There's no other option. Bass is always getting turned up, regardless if you want it or not. Some people will like that, some people won't. It's definitely a niche headphone. It's not for everyone. Before I cut into the individual aspects, I do want to touch on the soundstage and imaging. The soundstage was small. This was a very, very small soundstage. Imaging, on the other hand, I will give respectable credit to. Because if I'm in the listening mood, like I'm really listening to my music and I close my eyes and I'm paying attention, I can very vividly see like the guitars playing, the violins, the cellos, saxophones, whatever I'm listening to, even the artists. Like if I'm listening to Adele or something like that, I can visually see them. I can understand, I can tell where they are. Even in the closure sound stage, I can still, I can see their movement. So the, the imaging is very, very nice with respect to its price point. I really can't knock it for its imaging. So horrible soundstage in retrospects to how far out it is, but imaging, if you're actively listening to your music, very respectable. I have nothing bad about to say about the imaging with respects to its price. Now, talking about the individual aspects, the treble, I was very surprised. And straight honestly, I thought the treble would be so influenced by the bass range but the treble from my ears and for my ears is actually quite neutral. Believe it or not, it's neither accented nor is it recessed. And in the same sense, it also doesn't really have any good sparkle or extension, but it doesn't, like it's not a bad treble either. It's just there. If this was about any other pair of headphones or any other kind of sounding headphones, I would say that's for me, that's more of a bad thing. However, because of the very prominent bass bias that is present, that's actually kind of a good thing. So there's a few songs I listen to, like you're listening to the like rock music, that's a good example. A lot of rock music has some accents in the background. Some of them have, or I'll use electronic music because I have an example on top of my head. Some electronic music, like so I'll use t uh, Timmy Trumpet. Very bassy, but he uses a trumpet in several of his songs. If you're worried about the bass overlapping and that trumpet really not showing its shine, um, they will, not do bad by the trumpet. They will play it adequately and competently, but they won't accent or won't sound spectacular. Now, moving on to the mid-range. Uh, the mid-range, for those of you who follow me and who have watched a lot of my reviews and read uh, my reviews, kind of get a good hint of what I'm looking for in sound and 
why I think the mids are so important. But for those of you who don't or have never watched my stuff before, in which case, welcome. Merry Christmas to you as well. Uh, I really like mids because for me and me personally, the mids are where the soul is. That's where the vocals are. That's where you can feel and you can experience the artist's emotions and the feelings they're trying to portray to you. So if a headphone doesn't have good mids, they're just left sounding hollow to me personally, at least. But in the case with the Blitzwolf uh, HP-1s, and this is going to be a really short section, but these don't have any mids. They are explicitly hollowed out. Like, they are very, very recessed. No, it don't matter if I'm listening to male or females. They just, I heard and I could understand what they were saying, but it just never, I can never experience any emotion in the mids. It was just, I heard it, but that was it. Now, moving on to the bass. And whoo, goodness. <laughs> I, for what these are going for, which is a very fun, a very oomph party headphones, that's actually about what they are. These are a rock concert, a dubstep concert on your head in private because they're closed back and they do not leak. At least in my experience, they didn't leak at all. Granted, I don't blast my music, but very, very punchy bass all the way from the upper bass all the way to the sub bass. You, at least I can physically feel the thumps, especially like I said on the Timmy trumpets or um, I can't think of the name right now, but it sings blah, blah, blah. I linked it in my uh, written review, the two songs I'm talking about explicitly. But man, these are good bass. For if you're a bass head and you're looking for not a, just a an inexpensive headphone, so you want to work out on these. These do actually have great isolating. I have mowed the lawn. I have done some mild workouts and sweat. At least from in my time frame, I've had these headphones. I cannot speak for long long term, but for the time, the short time I've had these, sweat has not bothered them. They haven't missed a beat. They stayed on my head, regardless if I bent over, if I'm leaned back. Didn't miss a beat. And they had good isolation from the loud lawnmower. Um, but I, I digress back to my point. But just fun to listen to. Powerful bass. If you're a bass head looking for an inexpensive pair, I really strongly think you should look into the Blitzwolf brand. It seems like from the products I have listened to from them, they are more uh, either V-shaped, actually, yeah, prominently V-shaped sounds, but they're very fun. They're very punchy. They're very bassy. Uh, company or branding a lot of their products are and especially with the HP ones so other than carrying on with the other punchy deep and impactful bass these are not an audiophile quality bass at all at all there is a lot of decay as in the bass just about always bleeds into other notes which bleeds into other notes and it's just a long drawn out bass experience so if you're ever wanting like a tight bass or a bass to be controlled, these are not for you. Not. These are a fun sound to not be analytical, to just enjoy, bob your head, um, fist bump if you want to, whatever. These are just a fun headphone because the decay and the um, uh, slow attack of the bass, mm -mm. nope, nope, these, this bass is going to stay around for a while. Um, but anyway, guys, uh, that's it for the review of the Blitzwolf BW HP1 wireless headphone. Like I said, this goes for around 30, 40 bucks, depending on where you want to search through. But of course, I will leave a link in the description box down below where you can find a pair yourself and check out, check them out. If you have any questions or if there's anything I may have missed that you would like me to clarify more on these, please hit me up in the comments down below. I love replying to you guys. Content has been a bit dry for the last, actually, probably about two months. It's just that time of year again. If y'all remember my last year or my last three years, I think this is year four I've been doing this. Around the last, the four, quarter four of the year, it really, really slows down. Even on HeadFi, it just gets slow. Like I said, I've been moving into this house. This has been about a six week process of uh, looking into it and closing, etc. We finally got it, so we're still getting moved in. Our house is an absolute pigsty, plus Christmas. So you can imagine all the busyness I have had the last six weeks but January 1st is coming around very soon but anyway guys I hope you all have had a very very Merry Christmas I hope Santa was really good to you all gosh knows he has been to me Lord has blessed me quite a bit this year that is for sure 
But anyway, guys, as always, my name is Army Fire Dog. It has truly, truly been a pleasure talking to you all again. But most importantly, and please, I ask of you, my friends, please stay safe.